Moving on to the West, where the number one seed is North Carolina. Uh, Tar Heels lost to uh, NC State. The Wolfpack made that run uh, in the ACC tournament. Like, if there if there were a n- number one seed, I think most likely to get bounced early. I, I think it's UNC. I-, I think they are clearly the weakest of the one seeds here. Th- this is th- this is a region that I, I could like. I made the joke on Twitter earlier in the week about the old Brewster's Millions uh, movie about n- none of the above. Like, I think each of these top four seeds are super weak. And I, I think if, you, if you're going to have a complete dart throw type team to reach the final four, uh, I, I think this is the one to do it in. Uh, so I, I know they're the number one seed, but we've had a bunch of number one seeds bounce before the Sweet 16 uh, in, in recent years. You've, you've had since 2010, you've had 12 number one seeds losing the first or second round. So um, it, it's not uncommon. We had two last year, obviously Purdue losing in the first round. Um, and then there, there, there was one more that I'm forgetting right now. It wasn't what, what Houston Houston got there. Purdue lost in the first round. Who lost in the second round? Um, I need to check my bracket really quickly. Kansas maybe? Was it Kansas? Uh, no, Arkansas beat Kansas. I forget if that was a one eight. I'm trying to remember too. That was that was a one eight. Yes, it was okay. Kansas. Yep, you're, you're correct. Thank thank you, Will. For I, I used to know this crap all off the top of my head, like, and, and now I can't even remember last year. I knew there were two. Obviously, Purdue and, and, and Kansas got over over overlooked because uh, of the of the Purdue shocking loss. But but North Carolina, I think, is a team that uh, that second round game, whether it's against Mississippi State. Or Michigan State, uh, that is a dangerous game because uh, UNC does not close games out well. Um, they, they don't turn you over. I, I, I think North Carolina is living on borrowed time, and I'd be very, very surprised uh, if they even reach the Final Four. Uh, I did bet Mississippi State plus two and a half right off the bat in Sammy's piece uh, that he wrote on Sunday night. He, he asked what the first bet I made was, and I did grab two and a half with Mississippi State. Obviously, that's long gone now. Uh, I, I think it's one in most places, maybe one and a half uh, as well with Michigan State being favored. But uh, if, if I'm looking at one of those top first top three seeds to get bounced early, uh, I think it's North Carolina, Will. I'm with you on Mississippi State, and I think people are going to see Michigan State, the uniform, the reputation, and they're just going to on rope pick Michigan State. This is not a vintage Michigan State team. And just because, like Sammy said, just because things have happened in the past doesn't mean it's going to happen this year. I like this Mississippi State team. They're long. They're athletic. They're really hard to get good shots against. They've got a good point guard in Howard. I think Jans is a good coach. This game reminds me a little bit of Florida Atlantic Memphis last year where Anyone can win. It's a toss-up game, but whoever wins is live. And we saw Atlanta, uh, Florida Atlantic win a, a coin toss game. Really, Memphis was up one on the ball tr- uh, with the ball on the ground, trying to call timeout. They called the jump ball. Florida Atlantic got it, uh, scored, and went on to the final four. That could have easily been Memphis. I think this is a similar game where this is going to be a tight game, close. But whoever wins, I think is live. And if you know, let's say Mississippi State beats North Carolina and, and gets past Michigan State, then anything can happen in the bracket. It, it opens wide up, and there really isn't a number one seed in this bracket because UNC is was labeled a one, but they're ninth in Ken Palm. They're closer to like a three seed. So Mississippi state, I think 25 to one is the best price I've seen out there. I'm probably better off with the money line roller rollover. I know people it's easier said than done in terms of executing that, but uh, I think Mississippi state is very live here. The hell of a call. If you guys can knock off Carolina early, um, the question who goes down first weekend, maybe Arizona against Dayton, maybe, I would love for that to happen. You know, the Tommy Lloyd thing is very interesting. Um, I'm going to just tell you guys on Mississippi State, though. I didn't love it, but you guys clearly love it. So I'm going to just, I'm going to tell the crew on that one. Mississippi State, Carolina, give it to me. All right, guys, I'm going with Arizona to be the top three seed to lose out in the West because they just have proven year over year not to not get it done, even going back to when Sean Miller was coach, their, their last three appearances have not made it out of the Sweet 16 despite being a high seed. We know Tommy Lloyd, the current coach, 2-2 two and two the last two years as a 1-2 and two seed, but 0-4 against the spread. They continually sort of come up short in these moments. I don't know if the USC game a couple weeks ago really matters. They had clinched the pact of uh, number one overall seed, but losing to Oregon, a team that had, had handled twice this year. I do like the addition of Caleb Love to this team. That's what they missed last season. They also just have long moments where they don't score. We saw against Arizona. We saw in the tournament against last season, and, and I just don't know if their style of play really matches up well to what teams do well in the postseason. So I'm going to take Arizona here. And to prove it otherwise, guys, 
That's going to be my pick. Most years until Arizona, look, Arizona can prove me wrong this year. Go to his team, go to Elite Eight. The next year, I won't pick him. But right now, uh, I think Arizona, again, Tommy Lloyd 0 4 against the spread in his four games. Again, one and two seed. They're, they're back in the same spot as they've been in the past that haven't got done. So I'll go with Arizona. Yeah, they, they, they certainly have. And it would be certainly be no surprise for me to see them underperform again here. Completely untrustable team. Uh, 12 seed or lower to potentially win a, a first round game. Again, again this is a. Wide open region. I I'm gonna go with Charleston only because again Alabama like is one of those high high variance teams because they shoot a ton of threes. If they make them, they're gonna run you off the court. Uh, if they miss, the, you're you're gonna lose like like they did last year. So uh, again, it, it's one of those things as well where kind of similar styles and Alabama has potentially the better players, but uh. Tr- Charleston, it, it, plus a big number, why not, Will? I'm with you. Three-pointers from both teams. Bama is going to keep everybody in with their defense. They play terribly uh, just defensively. I know they're three and rim and everything on offense, but if those threes aren't falling, like last year against San Diego State, where I think they're like four of 37, uh, four of 37 something crazy bad from three against San Diego State where they got knocked out. Uh, anything can happen. If Charleston's hitting them and Bama's not, it, it could easily be Charleston. One, I would stay away from. Sometimes it's important to find the ones you want no part of. Do not pick Colgate. I'd be shocked if Colgate can hang around. This is not a vintage Colgate team. I know they've dominated that conference. They've been competitive in some of these NCAA tournament appearances the last you know decade or so. I think they played Wisconsin tough. They led Arkansas. Arkansas big for a half before Arkansas pulled away. They don't have the athletes. They don't have the offense. Baylor is going to run them off the court. So uh, Colgate would be one. I would stay away for. I like your Charleston pick. Sammy, what do you think? Yeah. Bama is, uh, is our guy T hold wrote in his sheet bear. He called Alabama a red flag team <laughs> because they don't get stops and you need to get stops in this tournament to get into that second weekend. And I love their offense but their defense leaves a lot to be desired. And look at that total too. I mean, it opened around 171, 172 and just got blasted higher. I mean, this could be a game 190 points maybe um, if it goes the way it could go. So uh, Bama's inability to get stops is very problematic. Is is Grand Canyon over St. Mary's too too logical? Is it is it is, it, is everyone's favorite sort of? Well, five upset is it? Is it too much to go in on that game? No, I don't. I don't think it's too much to go in. I just worry about like the stylistically, like that's St. Mary's, like isn't the type of team that I think is gonna is the best matchup for Grand Canyon. Like an experienced team with good guards, like well coached, slow down. Like I, I don't know if that's the best type of upset possibility. I think if Grand Canyon would have drew someone else, I would really like, but I, I don't think St. Mary's is the type of team that uh, matches is going to be a matchup problem or, or, or really, or, or, or I should say other way around. I, I don't think Grand Canyon is going to, is going to be able to really pull them out of their game. I actually like St. Mary's in that game. Yeah, those are two teams I was looking to play on. It's unfortunate they they happen to meet each other. I feel like that happens a lot. It's happened a couple times this year. Like James Madison, I like, but Wisconsin, I kind of like in the way they're playing. The committee has a habit of just uh, pairing these teams up. I know Alan Boston, famous uh, college basketball better, <laughs> you know, has his theories about. He's got a lot of theories, but uh, theories about why the committee does this and these teams that are bad for ratings, they pair them up so one of them is automatically knocked out and these mid majors don't get as far because the blue bloods are better for ratings. So I don't I don't know how much truth there is to it, but it does seem like you know these uh, these feisty little underrated teams. Teams seem to square off in yep. round one a lot. Boston, Boston Red on Twitter. Yeah, I, mean, I remember that was one. It's funny you brought up the uh, the FAU Memphis game uh, because yep. he 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 was all over that last year too when he saw that matchup in the first round. But it's an answer to your question, Jeff. Can I see it happen? Yeah, I could, but I I don't think it's the most. I think the most popular one is going to be McNeese as uh, the twelve five. But uh, could it happen? Sure. I, right. Well, last year none of the twelves won. That was right. one of the one of the bigger misnomers that every every year you got to pick a twelve over a five. So uh, maybe, maybe this year we'll see that we, we, we'll we'll see that reverse. Sammy, did I did I get your team to lose? Yeah, I went Charleston, Charleston over Bama. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I knew I knew I knew I knew Will did. I just I couldn't remember if I uh, if I followed up with you on that. I'm, I'm, I'm I will gonna... say though, if Marys loses the Grand Canyon, I'll cry because I have Marys in the Final Four. So oh. Could it I happen? I like that call. I, could I, it I, happen? 
Yeah, I thought about going there too. I thought about it. <laughs> Anything could happen. I love when Jeff like looks at his bracket and he's like, "Wait a minute." He's doing the math. He's like, "Uh, uh, uh I got Mary's. Yeah, I got Mary's over Baylor. That's my chaos region, Bear. Bottom left, chaos." I haven't yeah. filled it out yet, though, Sammy. So it's it's still <laughs> blank, still blank. But I have I have it right here in front of me, buddy. No, no notes today, though. I don't have. Oh, here's my pen. I'm gonna take some notes if I need to. Don't worry. Okay. Yeah. Those Missouri Valley first half unders last show were just buddy, well, it, yeah, we cook great. on those or what? Holy cow! Buddy, I'm just sitting in Mexico firing away first half <laughs> unders. Couldn't, couldn't even watch the game, so just raking in the money, guys. It's unbelievable. So I, I think if we we all think this is kind of a chaos bracket, if we had to pick a, a team seated fourth or lower to reach the Final Four, obviously Sammy just mentioned St. Mary's. Uh, Will, who who would you go with? Mississippi State, uh, I think that if things break open, if they can beat North Carolina, I did think about going with St. Mary's, but I like the Mississippi State defense. I like their athleticism. I like their point guard. I like their coach. Something different. Usually you get one kind of out of nowhere. I feel like that's an out of nowhere one. St. Mary's would be two, but I, I'm going to go here with Mississippi State. Now, I, I know a Mountain West team seated eighth or lower. They're 6-39 and 39 in the tournament, but you got New Mexico is an 11 seed who caught fire in the conference tournament. I know we've Talked about how we'd like to play against those teams, but you draw a Clemson team in the first round who I don't think is very good. You, you potentially get Baylor. I think Baylor will win that first round game uh, against Colgate. And I think you're looking at New Mexico, Baylor in the second round. And um, it's an interesting game. I, I would give New Mexico a chance in that game. So if you were looking for a uh, a price to win this region and get to the final four, I, I think New Mexico is another team. I think they're around 25, 30 to one. Um, to, to potentially win that that's at least what I saw them on Sunday at 20 foot or Monday morning, rather uh, 25 to one. I don't know what it is now. Um, I, I think New Mexico it would be worth the play there. Uh, Cause I think, I think that New Mexico, a New Mexico Baylor winner um, would be the team that has a really good chance of getting to the final four. Do we have like, so we have a day in New Mexico with a chance to get to the elite eight. And then one of those, and then Dayton, sure Dayton wins that game and, Beats Mississippi State for like uh, for Final Four appearance. Is that is that too wild? No, nothing. You could, <laughs> you could tell me pretty much anything except for like Long Beach State versus Howard in the Elite Eight, and, and like I would like buy it because that's how 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 schizo obviously Arizona is. How little I think of North Carolina in terms of them getting far. Alabama, like, like this is going to be a we so we say it. I say it. You know, this will be a crazy region. So of course uh, it, it'll play to. It'll play to Chuck. So, so will you got will you have uh, Mississippi State? Sammy, you got St. Mary's. Jeff, you have. I'm gonna go with Dayton. Why not? Ooh, it, throwing Anthony out there. Brand. I mean, I, I think I think Arizona loses early. I think Clemson loses early. Alabama loses early. St. Mary's loses early. We just talked about Mississippi State being North Carolina. I'm mean, not a lot of teams left on the board, guys. I don't know about you guys. I don't know about you guys. So, uh, <laughs> and I just go. So Dayton's still left on the board for us. But it's it's interesting. If you look at Dayton under Anthony Grant, all four games that Anthony Grant has coached at in, in the tournament as a head coach, um, VCU and, and Bama, all of them have been decided by one, uh, by two points or fewer or in overtime. So expect that uh, expect that Dayton Nevada game to be a uh, a close one. I'm going to go with Baylor just because I ultimately can't get there uh, with, with an 11 seed getting to the Final Four. I think I think of those top four seeds, I, I trust Baylor the most with the head coach who's gotten to the Final Four before, won a national championship, uh, the, the Big Twelve, obviously, uh, for, for the deepest conference in the in the league. The team that they've clearly shown they can play with higher higher level teams. Had that great game against Houston uh, earlier this year. So give me Baylor to be the team that comes out of the West. Bear Bets full episodes drop twice a week right here on the Bear Bets YouTube channel. Remember to subscribe to stay ahead of the odds and let's celebrate all of our wins together.